Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. We have our usual co-host in the hour three, which is John Moore and Morrison. And regularly popping in lately, we've had Professor McCanny. And through the week, uh, we have emergency reports from Tim Alexander. Uh, Tim, uh, hit the high points because we have a pile of guests and lots of topics to cover here today. Uh, what's the emergency report? Tim, are you there? I don't hear him. Okay, well, let's let's start with... Uh, Tim, are you there? Hi. Hi, is this Tim Alexander? No, Jim McCanny. Oh, Jim, okay. I was, I was expecting Jim, not Tim. Okay, <laughs> Jim. Okay, uh, so uh, let's hear first from John Moore, his emergency report, because often he has to head out early. And then we'll get uh, Professor McCanny and Ann Morrison. Uh, John, what's the latest? Well, we're, we're paying careful attention to uh, the events in the Ukraine. It, it appears that the Western Intelligence Services have been uh, playing their dirty tricks as usual uh, with similar to these Arab Spring things, this is not a spontaneous uprising. This is a contrived event from the, the courtesy of our intelligence agencies, RCI and MI5 probably, um, doing these things. Um, but it appears they may have reached an impasse and may be signing a, uh, some kind of a treaty between the two uh, uh, disputing parties, and which is a good thing, because this could easily escalate into a regional conflict, if not uh, World War III. So if it, anything it calms yeah. it down, I'm, I'm glad to hear that and see that. Well, they're saying that they have some kind of an interim agreement, but uh, when you have an armed insurrection, uh, this is not a, like an angry public. And we also see that they're being paid by the West, by Europe, and by America, given satellite phones and other uh, means of support, including weapons. Uh, this is a, a vile interference in internal affairs in a country that's duly and properly elected. And it's also trying to actually rattle the cage of Russia, which is a military provocation for war. And I think that Mr. Putin is not going to put up with it. I expect that if this thing deteriorates, the uh, Russian army will be marching in there to get control of the situation if this, quote, interim agreement doesn't keep the lid on this mess. Well, using our, our example here in North America, uh, Ukraine is, is more like uh, Montana than it is Canada to the government of, of uh, Russia. You know, it's, yeah, it's, it's like another it's, state. It's, another, it's, like, another it's state. like another satellite state. Precisely, yeah, exactly. and, and they're not—they're exactly. not going to tolerate this foreign intrigue and foreign influence and foreign intervention in something that they consider their real estate, even if it is technically a independent country. It was part of Mother Russia for decades, and uh, they're not about to right. let this stand. Yeah, and militarily, it actually takes a nation that's armed to the teeth and advancing new weapon systems every year. Russia has the best physicists on Earth now and the most advanced, highly tuned and upgraded nuclear force on the planet. So I think it's really a stupid move on our part to think that we can just uh, kind of slam these people and treat them with disrespect. This is, no, this is one of the things that Rodney Dangerfield used in his uh, comedy skits all through Las Vegas and around the, the world is I don't get no respect. Well, when you when you make sure that you treat people with no respect, including national leaders and nations, you're going to get, you really have get yourself into trouble. It's like a mob leader that ticks off all the mob leaders in his region of the country and wonders why everybody's trying to kill him. So well, if the KGB uh, was in Montana, riling up the Montanans uh, with uh, covert methods, um, we would be very upset and be ready to send them to troops, wouldn't we? Yeah, in, indeed. Um, we want to hear a quick report from Anne of any uh, updates. We have, of course, the expanding on uh, the 19th of February, the cross the, the, what I call the Rubicon in terms of it now being declared an epidemic of the H1N1P flu. Uh, we have the H7N9 that's going to start really clobbering uh, the West, Europe, it's all elsewhere, and it has a very high case fatality rate. And we have other variant forms of flu coming back, uh, including H5N1, which happened in Edmonton, that had the D225R gene that caused encephalitis in that lady that returned from uh, Shanghai. Um, we have earth changes occurring as well. Uh, any major update stories, uh, Anne, and then we're going to hear from Professor McCanny. Well, I think the situation at the waste <clears throat> isolation pilot plant in uh, southeastern uh, New Mexico is very serious. The, they don't seem right. to have a handle on it. They found plutonium and americium in the air above the plant, and apparently the filters were not in place when when that was leaked out. And there's no explanation for how plutonium or americium 
could have uh, gotten out of the sealed containers that were underground. Well, I, I think what we have to do is assume that that uh, these containers were made with the same depth and quality assurance as some of the toys that kind of their lead lined uh, cups and so on from China. Uh, when they say that these are, you know, really well crafted and they're sealed properly by robotic uh, welds, etc., um, you know, I don't buy it. I, I know when we were doing our toxicology testing with Nova and Rocky Flats back in 97 when I worked under Reserve Admiral Hughes in Rocky Mountain Ahmed, I reported how we had liquid radioactive waste sitting literally in containers, sitting on pads in the open, not even under a, a roof, with extreme weather, which you we were testing groundwater and finding that the radioisotopes were actually moving toward the North Platte River. So well, um, is, nothing yeah, would surprise is. me. I'm, I, you know, enough, if it's catastrophically bad, and the government or the officials are malignantly stupid, that usually is confirmed most of the time. It's rare to see intelligence, uh, honor, and the willingness to tell the truth. There was an earthquake that was not very far from Hanford, and it just occurred in the last four hours or so. It wasn't a big earthquake, but the fact that it occurred at all so close to this site that has uh, under storage, underground storage tanks that are leaking into the Columbia River is of concern. Yeah, they're only uh, less than a mile from the Columbia. What they really need to do, I think, is a diversion project where they move the Columbia. and. Um, that's really important because the Columbia River is part of the Nawapa project for northern power to divert it. But I think they should divert it away from Hanford site. That site is basically another Fukushima waiting to happen. And we have other Fukushima-like Superfund sites here in America or places where they're going to lose backup power because of what's below the water line there. Diesel generators. Uh, the, the technology is old. It's really the same kind of stupid technology. Mark one react boiling water reactors they have in Japan. Uh, and there are some that are in pretty highly reactive fault line zones like the New Madrid Fault System or Diablo Canyon up in Northern California. So we have a number of what we call brewing disasters here in America and we're presuming we're not going to have a big superquake when in fact I think the superquake and they had a, a special line this last Wednesday called Strip the City on DirecTV and they actually uh, announced that the Strip the City, the strip the city uh, would be uh, Tokyo where the next most likely superquake will strike. Well. If a superquake strikes, there were five other reactor sites besides Fukushima that caused damage to the reactors, but they got control back and didn't lose containment or end up with a meltdown. But a major superquake, uh, you know, level eight or nine, uh, they're going to lose control. And we're going to have, if we think the radiation we had from Fukushima was bad, what's coming is going to be orders of magnitude worse. Well, we're already seeing that. Uh, they're becoming more and more aware of, of what they're created here, what they've created there. They, they are having critical, criticality, and that means that they are uh, producing fission products like strontium-90. Right. Strontium-90 yeah. goes into the bones, and it creates leukemia, and not only that, uh, it creates birth defects and um, genital defects, and essentially it, it makes a woman barren. Yeah, I know. It's really awful. Um, any other major uh, updates? And then I think in the next segment we're going to have Professor McCann give his reports. And then we'll have a dialogue back and forth to kind of uh, mash this up in terms of what people need to do to prep. Because uh, this year and next is going to be years of disaster. They're going to be what I call birth paying years, where things are going to get over the top, out of control. And I would not at all doubt that, that it may precipitate some form of martial law, uh, a bank holiday, and a bailing in of people's money. Uh, the Japanese nuclear uh, situation is such that if they hadn't started their reactors, which they decided last week after the Tokyo election, that within 30 to 60 days their country was going to go bankrupt because they had leveraged so much of their capital into their nuclear reactor systems. So uh, we're teetering. Yeah, these are the same conditions that happened before 1929 when a major quake the year before in Japan precipitated the 1929 crash. Uh, everything looks like 1928, just before things went kablooey in 1929. Back in a moment, Professor McCanny coming up. I remember when, I remember, I remember when I lost my mind. Don't lose your mind. Uh, as I say, once you listen to the program, do your own research, 
and ask better questions, and you have some topics, and we're going to segue those into talk to Professor McCanny. Uh, you want to talk about coronal mass ejections uh, and what's going on with space weather and other issues. Uh, can you give us the latest update? Yeah, we've had uh, four CMEs. They were small CMEs, that is, they weren't moving very fast. And uh, But in the last two days, and they have hit the magnetosphere of the Earth and caused a crack in it, and that allows the electrons to uh, spiral down the magnetic lines of force and create auroras as far south as, well, I think they're saying South Dakota right now. Right. And uh, it also increased the intensity of the lightning strikes during the storm Seneca that's crossing the country and going into the northeast at the moment. Uh, we... We had strong lightning here. We had strong winds. And they're saying that uh, some of the winds, well, the pressure was like a Category 3 hurricane, and the winds were above 100 miles per hour. Uh, here we had 70-mile-an-hour yeah. uh, winds. And we had some tree damage. Yeah, and of course, was, uh, what Professor McCanny said, and I totally agree with him, that when we see this extreme weather and we see things like the magnetosphere being cracked, etc., it f adds further credence to the idea that all weather, all earthquakes and all volcano are plasma events. And as the magnetosphere gets disrupted, as the poles already, you know, and some people have speculated the poles could start splitting up and get more than one uh, north pole, more than one south pole, they start disappearing like before the Santiago quake of about four or five years ago, that uh, plasma events are tied in with a giant magnetosphere hole over the South Atlantic Ocean that's five times the, the diameter of the Earth out of 22,000 miles. They discovered, I think, what, six years ago when they flew five satellites through it from NASA. Um, what's happening is that everything is the, in the Earth is in convulsions. Uh, things are not normal, and we're in a not normal state where extreme weather, uh, increased ultraviolet light, uh, increase, increasing uh, storms that destroy crops and now the onset of an ice age, all these things are tied together and perhaps to explain some of that we have Professor McKinney. Professor McKinney, what do you see happening and how crazy will this get over the next say five years, ten years? Well, it, uh, predictions are hard to make, um, but uh, right yeah, now... Yeah, just, just uh, suppositions based on science though, in other words, you don't want to set dates, but we want to set what are the the, the, the drivers and what are the, uh, the the possible timelines of the weather, space weather and Earth weather uh, in terms of what these mean? Because you, I see the big word I would say converging all of it is famine, uh, climate shift. You know, um, in places like the drought, if it continues at this current rate in California, a lot of people are going to have to leave because they won't be able to afford to buy water. It'll be a commodity; it won't be a, a public service. Yeah, with that, the whole California issue is being driven by man-made events. The high pressure cell of California is a man-made event, and I think that's ultimately clear. But um, Right, and tell us about that, because uh, you picked up on that, uh, Rens picked up on that. Tell us why it's a man-made event, why they're blocking the highly radioactive rains coming from Kamchatka in northern Japan, uh, which would head over here and dump on us and cause acute radiation sickness. Those man-made events are actually there specifically to make sure that we don't freak out and go crazy when we realize we're being poisoned in the government of the United States, the International Atomic Energy Agency, and the scientists around the world are basically being restrained from meeting and actually discussing this openly on the media and doing something about it. Yeah, well, the, the other thing is, the, the, the although it's blocking the rain from coming into California, that same rain is moving north as it cools, it maintains in the atmosphere, goes up anywhere from Alaska to the Arctic Circle and then comes down, and it's in the snow in the entire United right. States. In that snow Right, belt, like down in Missouri, they picked belt. up radioactive snow down there. Yeah, yeah, so this radioactivity is not, it's not like it's not disappearing and it's not going anywhere. It's coming down into the eastern United States. So why they're doing right. this and preventing it from going into California is anybody's guess. These guys are nuts. Uh, but that's what's going on. <clears throat> so the snow melt is going to drive this into the water systems all over the country, into the fields, into the breadbasket of the United States. And what I've been telling people is they have to prepare to start removing uh, radiation in their kitchen water. Uh, for water for cooking, water for... You don't have to remove it from washing dishes, but uh, for any type of uh, cooking, uh, tea, coffee, 
uh, sprouts, uh, anything that you would consume, uh, you uh, washing food, for example, uh, you would want to wash with water that has been purified. And the other, the other real issue here is that radiation, when it's in water, uh, it's usually attached to some kind of impurity. And when you filter out that impurity, you therefore filter out the radioactive particle, but it's an ionic bond and it's very weak. And so uh, yeah. there's no inline water filtration system that will take out uh, radiation. Uh, because it, it, it except ours. Are the pure water system through. specifically, our, our system will do that. Our pure water system specifically will pull all the radioisotopes because it's a low pressure system. And it's a design with the highest RO. It's got a, it's an ion exchange resin as well. So at the end, if you look at TDS, total dissolved solids, including radioisotopes, it's zero. It's cleaner than distilled. So we specifically were planning on this in advance because I knew there would be an event. I thought it might be just a nuclear war in the Middle East, but you know, if you take your statistical chances that these nuclear reactors are going to blow because of an earthquake or a stupid accident from, you know, things like the Stuxnet virus that hit Japan years ago. Uh, you know, you knew that eventually Japan sitting on a fault line central is going to have a disaster, and I don't think it's over. I think that this is the start of something that's going to be a lot worse than Fukushima, where half a dozen nuclear reactor sites go crazy. Yeah, well, uh, it's, it's here, the radiation. I mean, it's not like it's a secret. Um, uh, it's, it's, uh, you can see this. Uh, in the uh, on the internet, you can. I mean, this data is available. They're measuring it with independent uh, buoys in the ocean that are funded by uh, independent agencies, and that's the only data we have. We don't have any data from government. Uh, maybe, Ann, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm not aware of no, any there's no real data, data yeah. that that is available from government agencies who are entrusted to do this. Uh, but at any yeah, rate, yeah, neither the uh, Canadian nor the American. Yeah. yeah, I do reports every week with uh, Kim, well, Chris Harris, that's his radio name, our nuclear safety expert. And there's zero data from the government. The Environmental Protection Agency, the International Atomic Energy Agency. Uh, I talked to Senators Weinstein uh, here in California, Feinstein and, uh, and uh, Wyden in Oregon. I got nowhere. And I have a background in nuclear toxicology, and I can tell you these people are beyond useless. They're evil. Uh, and when we ask tough questions, they act like, we, how, how dare we ask questions or put them on the spot? I call it the incredible shrinking scientists. When you ask them questions and they pretend to be a prescient in the knowledge base, and when they actually prove that they know nothing, uh, I get a little angry, and I, I know how to stomp on their heads when they act like that because I've been hardened in court. And I can tell you what I see happening here is a form of uh, a by default genocide because much of the population doesn't realize how many people probably already died due to Fukushima and how many more when these long-acting isotopes bioaccumulate are going to die prematurely. It's, uh, they don't even connect the dots because the doctors are not trained to discover oh, yeah, cardiac thing, arrhythmias. Yeah, that's the thing, Dr. Yeah. Bill, is uh, things like cardiac arrest or lymphoma, other things like that, which, which are... Yeah, thyroid cancer, brain that's cancer. A, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a catastrophe of unequal proportions. Back in a moment with... Because the show is heard worldwide, I get a lot of people send me information, scientists and people out there, most we have our contacts. One of them was a, a couple of years ago, there was a, uh, some photographs sent to me about the Popocata Petal volcanic system, and they actually showed lightning bolts going down through the center of the volcano. Uh, one of the most amazing things that you said, Professor McKenney, is that basically all volcanism, all earthquakes, and all weather is a plasma event. It's not heating, there's the solar heating of the oceans and it causes the weather systems to move around. That's not true. Uh, and, and the question I'd have is, are we likely to see an increase in extreme weather and increase in volcanism, maybe even amplified by Fukushima, but or some other event that's affecting both the earthquake that caused Fukushima and the extreme weather? There's something going on that's tying these together because they seem to be parallel. There seems to be a, a dramatic increase, not only with, with Dr. Uh, Zangari and the we announced uh, four years ago when they did the Makondo drill site. But now since Fukushima, we're seeing much more extreme weather. Uh, and, of course, we have these cycles for for uh, ice ages, 
uh, we went over for years with Rob, Bob, uh, Dr. Uh, Robert Felix, his book uh, Ice Age, uh, not by ice, but by by fire, but by ice, and his his website, IceAgeNow.info. Um, I'm searching to try to find what kind of scientific connection there is here, but there seems to be some pattern that's emerging that indicates extreme volcanism and earthquakes and weather are tied together. Uh, what's the tie-in? Well, the, there again, um, the if you look at statistics of anything like foul weather, earthquakes, uh, volcanism, the the real issue is looking at statistics over very long periods of time. And then also, uh, like I was saying on the break, let's take a look at something like prime numbers. Uh, if you go way out into the big numbers and look for prime numbers, sometimes you find groupings that are very closely clustered together and then nothing for a long time. Uh, right. And uh, so we have to actually wait to see if, uh, if there's some kind of grouping or cycling of earthquakes or volcanic activity, and then all of a sudden we're not going to have any for a while, and that makes up, that's kind of like a time-averaged, making up for it kind of thing. So it's really impossible to say right now until we wait a while. Uh, if well, what happened is over the last three years, though, if you look at if you look at the earthquake map uh, and the frequency of five-plus earthquakes over the Japanese fault line system, it's not a, a discontinuous thing. It's a continuous, like, increased noise of five-plus earthquakes. Since May 11, March 11th, that's like almost like somebody threw a big switch. And I know it's not artificial because there's lots of earthquakes there anyway, but there's something happening to really ramp up the volume. And it's not something that just happens like prime numbers that are just clustered together. Uh, we're also seeing increased sinkholes all over the world, which Ann reports on. We're seeing extreme weather where the jet stream has moved dramatically 30 degrees where from where it usually is, so the polar vortex is pulling it down. Perhaps, and you mentioned also they're doing global climate change with geoengineering. What's happening there? Yeah, well, there again, uh, we don't really have a good measure. We can measure certain individual events, like we can see the high pressure cell off of California and the Pacific Ocean is man made. I mean, you can see it. It's like a wall where the weather just will not move in the Pacific Ocean, and it's very abnormal. So you can see it. You can also see where they're generating the low pressure cells in the Pacific which are spinning all of that radioactive water in the air, moisture in the air, up into Alaska, where it's only got one place to go, and that's down into the 48 states. Um, right. So you, we can see that's manipulated uh, over long periods of time. So we talk about climate change, or that's climate control. But we Do you think it's going to be climate no, warfare? Like, it may not be ours, it might be someone else? You know, uh, obviously no, something, no, somebody's manipulating no, the weather. Ours. No, no, this is ours. This is being. I figured it was, but why? Oh, yeah. why where would they do that, though? Because, you know, uh, sometimes we talk about stupid or evil. Why you're would? And maybe John to, can jump in here to a minute. Uh, you're you're asking me to tell you why a crazy group of people are doing crazy things. <laughs> exactly. In other words, I want you to frame it that way, John. What do you think of that, uh, that Steve? Because well, one, one of the, it's I've been picked been up by Professor McCanny and for forty years, gentlemen, and. And when you try to use logic and reason to determine the actions of somebody who has no logic and has no reason, you're going down a blind hole. Yeah, exactly. In other words, people need to realize this isn't just stupidity. This is liquid, molten evil. And, uh, it, and it's trying to find the lowest common denominator, which means it wants to race us to economic chaos, to war, to ecological chaos. There's no attempt whatsoever. And I really think a lot of things can be done to stop this. I'm writing a paper on it where all the technical things could be done to stop, like, you know, cabled air pressure robots or shielded and depleted uranium and use fiber optics instead of putting a brain inside the robot. We could put a corium catcher underneath there. We could kevlar our spire silk tents over the site. We could use all kinds of technology to remediate and reduce the radiation getting into the ocean. We're doing nothing. We're not using muon uh, imaging technology to find out where the corium is or ground penetrating radar. We're, it's actually it's beyond obscene. They didn't even properly put together the containers. So this last week, they admitted that 100 tons at least of super uh, concentrated, extremely highly radioactive water got out into the Pacific Ocean. They're, they'll say, well, it's 100 yards to the ocean. Oh, it didn't get out. It's like, are you kidding? It, it, when these containers burst, it went directly in the Pacific. So I'm, I'm just aghast that the Japanese are also of a policy of taking highly radioactive material and burn it with non-radioactive 
and literally saying it's a national duty to move it all over every prefecture in Japan and burn this stuff as an international crime against the troposphere and the people of Earth. This is a crime done by the Japanese government to burn radioactive waste and remobilize it into the troposphere. It's just obscene. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to yeah, say, one, one reason we know that the strontium-90 got into the atmosphere was because we had red auroras. We don't usually have oh, yeah. they're usually green yeah. or blue, but for a while after right. uh, 2011, they were red, and that was an indication that there was strontium in the atmosphere. Wow. Yeah, it also uh, is part of the reason why the ozone hole got so darn big, and that also means we're being based with high-energy re- high ultraviolet light. Uh, cosmic background radiation, and which also damages trees, increases the chances of forest fires, damages crops, and also harms people because when you get these radiation sources, they suppress your immune system, they can cause skin cancer, and they can cause cataracts. That's P T Y E R G I O N, where the sclera grows across your visual axis and you end up going blind unless you have eye surgery. So uh, a lot of weird things are going on, and most people are so overwhelmed, they don't want to think that what we're telling them is the truth, but your comment, John. Well, <laughs> people don't want to uh, look at things that disturb their reality. It's called uh, right. normalcy bias. And right. uh, and then that's an expected human response. And and, and we we're, we don't get upset when we hear this because uh, most people do respond in that way, and they don't want to hear it. You know, the reason why is because this entire panel is made of sheepdogs, not sheep. That's right. <laughs> That's right. We, I, I don't, I can't even think in my my wildest imagination like that. I, I, to me, it's so foreign. It's like those must be sentient beings from another world. Why, why do people tolerate that? Why do people, you well, know, we have a sheep pecking order? Don't expect a sheep to do anything except to be sheep, do they? Right. Well, yeah. I and mean, we can't change them from sheep. To, well, we can, as I say, bark at their ankles so they don't fall over the cliff or get eaten by a wolf. Um, uh, you know, uh, Professor McKinney. What do you expect, you know, without putting timelines, what do you expect will happen with our space weather, our Earth weather, our volcanism, earthquakes? Because these are all plasma events, you know, not without giving a setting a date or whatever. What do you think you expect is going to happen in the near to the not-so-near future? Um, well, like I say, predicting is difficult. Um, what, what I would say, and my personal bias, is that we have to worry much more about the political upheaval in the world today uh, yeah, I, give I your comment on that because I know you wanted to mention that. Because the political yeah. upheaval, like in Kiev and elsewhere, uh, the globalists are on a ramp. They're on an upward ramp to something very cataclysmic, aren't they? Yeah, well, they are using the United States. The United States right now is very involved in the Ukrainian, as uh, Weird John was talking about. Uh, we have the same thing in Syria. We have the Syrian uh, neighbors going to the UN and other international media and saying that the United States is doing this, but what I wanted to report on was Venezuela. Yeah, let's get into that when we come back in the next break here. Uh, we need to talk about that because they're going for the oil and they want the regime change there as well. Welcome back and uh, <clears throat> we're not only uh, sheepdogs, we're also conspiracy scientists. I don't like the term conspiracy theorist. In fact, it, it, it kind of is almost like the saying a slur, but if you actually dissect each term, it means that there's enough evidence that it could be considered a theory, which means that yeah, but conspiracy, conspiracy scientist theory, sounds better to me. Conspiracy yeah. theory was a term that was developed by the uh, CIA think tanks decades ago as a way to label. In fact, it started out with Spiro Agnew. He's the guy that started using that. It was a term they gave him to... Uh, to talk against the nattering nabs of nabobism, or what was the term that Spiro used? Nattering uh, nabs of nabobism, that's right. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I think you're right. Boy, where did yeah. that Spiro from? Agnew had a, had, a real, uh, pen, had a real talent of, of taking the tongue twisters and making a political point. Now, you had some real cor- important comments on the break, and I want to get into those, uh, Professor yeah. McKinney, because it, it goes from the scientific side to the geopolitical uh, and the current attacks on the regime change that are now going on while they're doing the Syrian thing, and they're trying to make Syria fail in these talks, the Geneva talks. They're now trying to push on Iran, and they're telling Russia, don't interfere. 
because basically, if there's an attack on Syria and Iran, we're locked in a third world war with Russia and China and all well, their satellite China, nations. Yeah. In, in all of these cases, whether it's Venezuela, Venezuela with a guy named Lopez, who's CIA supported, uh, whether it's in Syria right. where they're infiltrating with uh, groups and, and military weapons, and or the Ukraine, or in other countries, uh, the story is the same. Uh, they're they're moving these people uh, with a lot of support. But in all cases, they go, then they come in and they go and they go, oh, we're an independent third party international. We want to save peace and democracy. Let's have a coalition government. But nobody from the previous government can be in this because they have a bone to, to pick against uh, the rest of the people. So we need somebody independent. So in that subtle way, they eliminate the government that's currently elected in these countries. <clears throat> this is what's going on in Syria, this is what's going on in yeah. Ukraine, and in Venezuela right now. These are the three hot spots, and look at them. Uh, Venezuela can provide the world with gasoline, raw gasoline for under 50 cents a gallon. Um, right. <laughs> look at the what they're going after. And, of course, um, uh, the, 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 you know, the people are calling this out, like Evo Morales of... of, uh, of uh, um, uh, Bolivia came out and publicly said, he said, this is the United States doing this. He said, these people are in here trying to afflict this on democratically elected leaders in democracies. And he said, we may not agree with everything of those countries or, uh, you know, whatever, but that's a democracy and we respect that. Those people elected those leaders and we're going to let them do what they want. And, and the word is out of these countries, they're saying that this is being promoted and uh, so, you know. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, Ann and John, what do you think of the comments that Professor McKenna just mentioned? Because I see this year and next as being extremely dangerous because of the, the air, not only the geological, the weather, the Ice Age issues and everything else in Fukushima. We're, we're heading where we're seeing interest rates rise through the ceiling in third world and second world countries to prevent flight of capital. We see America trying to do regime change in multiple nations all at once and in a rabid kind of rage, not even considering that they may actually precipitate a World War III nuclear, chemical, and biological exchange. And at the same time, the bond market's ready to have a run. The Japanese ready to have their economy crash because literally if they didn't start their nuclear reactors, their economy, which is leveraged against these reactors, is going to go poof. And that means a bond run is almost certain in a bank holiday and bailing in your money in the bank to the, keep the bank solvent, which won't because it's not enough money. John and Ann, your comments, because I, I think this year is going to be a big challenge to people. They may think that we're just speculating, but these speculations are based on pattern recognition that there's going to be something very bad happen. And we have some, with those setting dates, we have some scenarios. Bank holiday likely, flu coming worse likely, uh, economic breakdown in a war in the Middle East, at least a war before a peace treaty. Uh, things are going to get pretty darn crazy this year next. Well, Doctor, uh, and I agree with Professor McCannick, first of all, but one uh, contingency does not preclude or exclude another contingency. In fact, two or three exactly. or four could all happen simultaneously. Yeah, in fact, uh, that, that's one of the things we've discussed repeatedly on this show, is you can have more than you know, four or five or six or seven scenarios, all at different times and different extents, all coming, for example, the flu can come back in multiple waves over a decade or more, like the Asian flu in 1957 to 1968. The economic chaos can come in what we call spasms, where we had a spasm in 2008. We're going to have another spasm, I think, by the fall of this year or the fall of next year. Um, there's a lot of things converging to tell us that that we're probably going to have some pretty bad things happen here shortly that will allow the globalists to, to seize even more control and power. Uh I want to break in just for a second here. Yeah, the, the, the yeah. thing that I see more than anything with the severe amount of uh, weather control that's going on now, uh, with the political situation, um, and uh, the kind of the sleeper in the United States, uh, and, and I, I find it interesting, too, just small signals that the United States might be waking up. Uh, only three million people have signed up for Obamacare. That's only one in every hundred right. of people in the U.S., and they're just the poor people that never had insurance anyway. But many right. people that don't have insurance have not well, signed up. 
Well, I read, I read a recent statement yesterday that, uh, that there are 34 people who have purchased, for the first time, guns in America compared for every person that's signed up for Obamacare. And uh, they should have a T-shirt out. I saw actually a version of it uh, kind of put out there where it showed Obama with a T-shirt on and a cigarette hanging out of his mouth and an AK-47 and said, do you like me now? And in other words, he's a gun salesman because he's trying to gun grab, even trying to take lead uh, lead shots so you can't have lead leaded bullets buying up through these various agencies and many different divisions of the government that have no business of having guns, buying hollow points that are more expensive for testing and so on. All of this is totally crazy, totally rational, and uh, no one in the Republican Party is doing their job to actually start impeachment on this guy. Uh, I don't know what they think they have on him, but, you know, we're heading toward a crash this year, and I think it's going to be uglier than 2008. I think we're going to have people really, you know, the streets are going to go crazy. You're going to see people kind of go nuts. And when the food stops and, the, and the, this extreme weather we're having here in the West Coast, there's no there's no attempt whatsoever to try to stop Fukushima, but they're starving us for water. We're down to 20% to 10% in all our reservoirs here. If it continues, we're going to have unbelievable forest fires here in the next few months, and we're going to have uh, water rationing where they're going to say, flush your toilets once a day. We're going to put massive tiered fines on you if you use more than X number of gallons of water. It's going to get very ugly. Yeah, and that's the point. This is being driven... It's too late now. I mean, unless you had a massive uh, rainstorm in California, it, it could never make up for what's been lost already. So this is a guaranteed event. Uh, 11, there's right. an article I, I uh, 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 talked about on my show a number of months ago. It said 11 major U.S. cities this summer will be without water. In other words, you will turn the faucet, and there won't even be rationing. It just will not be there. Uh, and uh, they were scattered right. around the United States. But that's, uh, that's a, an amazing concept. And uh, here's another issue. We have nobody in leadership. I've always talked about, I've got a book, e-book called Water. The main point is we do not have a water shortage problem. We have a water management problem. All of the snow melt exactly. from past years could be easily stored and funneled off to various parts of the country with very minimal infrastructure. Uh, and none right. of this has been done. I mean, we have people that have no idea what they should be doing and are doing things that they shouldn't be doing. It's just the government is so right. far out of line, uh, it's, it's, well, it's inconceivable. Yeah, the local city of Los Angeles, for example, saw this to some extent, and they have underground storage facilities, and they store two years of water. And this is just, you know, using logical common sense in Los Angeles, which is a little smarter than the rest of the country in some ways. Uh, what I see happening this year, though, is a march toward a bank holiday, a march toward weather chaos, a march to a war in the Middle East, a march to bailing in people's money, uh, airborne plagues, uh, radiation levels getting making people acutely sick, so the people finally wake up and say, oh my gosh, you know, the Genesis Network and the Neutral Medical Report and, and Professor McCanny's show and John Moore and Morrison's show on the LibertyMan.com over at Republic Radio, uh, is telling the truth, and everybody else is the snooze, I call it, putting you to sleep or causing a, I call it, news-induced lobotomy. They're putting people in a dissociative fugue of, of, uh, of a nightmare and not giving any relief. I mean, it really is, you know, it keeps me up at night, let's put it that way. Your comments, uh, anyone? Um, yeah, well, just uh, I think people have to become aware and then become prepared. And preparedness is relatively simple. It's just that now you have a radiation factor that was not there before. Yeah, exactly. Uh, John, of course, we always mentioned it before. Uh, equipment and skill sets, Trump okay. scenarios. And, of course, and uh, the airborne plagues are coming to Fukushima as the radiation levels are going to really start spiking. You better detox, as they say. You better protect yourself or God help you. Take care, everybody. Take action.